Alrighty, this is the Devils post game podcast. We're live, live. The Devils uh, finished up their game just about five minutes ago, losing to the Islanders four to one. Bastion had the lone goal for the Devils, and um, yeah, what I mean, this evening actually started off with uh, some surprising news. But mm-hmm. let's start off with Scott Wedgwood. Mm-hmm. He didn't play that bad. I thought he actually played pretty well. Yeah, you know, just kind of looking back again at the goals that were that um, scored that were scored on him. You know, the second goal, it was a nice backhand shot. Uh, he followed a guy all the way across. I mean, if if you want to lay blame on him for anything, uh, maybe that one. But that was also a bad giveaway in our zone, and then. You know the Islanders skated it all the way down and, and gave it walked away. it into the zone. Gave it away. Was that Mikey McLeod that gave it away? Yes, it was Mikey McLeod. Who else? <laughs> <laughs> Once um, I saw that, I knew that they were going to score. I called it <laughs> five seconds prior. Yeah, I mean Wedgwood. Wedgwood did all he could. I mean, you know, in in reality, he had thirty-one saves. Uh, you know, again, this is the. You know, this is the third game out of the four where we've allowed north of thirty-five, sh- uh, north of thirty shots. You know, and then the the lone game under that we um, we allowed what twenty-eight. So we've allowed fifty, uh, thirty-five tonight, fifty against the Rangers, twenty-eight against the Bruins on Saturday, and thirty-seven against the Bruins last Thursday. So that's a lot of shots against. Um, that's a problem, and these penalties are a problem. That power play goal, a too many men on the ice penalty, that's the worst penalty to give up. That's on the entire team. That's on that's on the players. That's on the coaches. That's just a terrible penalty to give up. And then our penalty kill has not been very good. Um, they've had plenty of opportunity to fix it, obviously, because we've given up so many. I mean, we at least – only gave up three tonight, but the killer was that too many men, which is one of the worst penalties to take. That's just that that's just terrible to take. Uh, and then that goal was nice tip. You you, you got to give credit to Nelson there on, on that on that tip. But um, man, it's just you know uh, come back down to earth. You know we played well against Boston enough to get to overtime both games with a victory in one game. We destroyed the Rangers, but you know the Islanders were going to be tough. Uh, we knew that going into today, especially with Mac Black going out last minute. Um, but again, I, you know Mac Black would have had to shut the Islanders out in order to get a win tonight uh, with only one goal scored. You know we had shots, we had thirty-one, but Varlamov's a good goalie. So you know if the scoring's not there, that's not going to be you know that's not good enough. I mean our faceoff percentage was atrocious tonight, thirty six percent, almost thirty seven percent. That's not very good. So uh, this is you know this is a tough team. But here's the best part about this season: uh, we day off tomorrow, right back at it Saturday, and it looked like there was a little bit of fisticuffs at the end, and uh, that'll carry over to Saturday as well. Yeah. Um, a uh, well, first off, also we want to say. Hello to everyone who's been uh, joining us uh, on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, uh, Amazon Prime, wherever wherever the hell we are. We're all over the place. Thank we're you. We're everywhere. Uh, we are everywhere. I got, I, I got the Facebook app up over here, so I see everyone. Mike, yeah, so do I. Craig, and my, the other Michael, Viola, uh, Cheryl, Richard Slanko, uh, Matt, Junior. Oh, so I see everyone watching. just want to say hi. Um, Wedgwood, he didn't play bad. He didn't play bad. There's a no. definite difference when you look back there and you see Scott Wedgwood instead of Mackenzie Blackwood. You're like, whoa, Mackenzie Blackwood's a lot bigger. He looks a lot bigger mm-hmm. in goal there, you know? Oh, he is. And, uh, you know, Wedgwood, uh, he, he gave it his all tonight. You know, I think in a perfect world, he's much better suited at the AHL level, you know, but we were dealt a, an awkward hand there with uh, what went down with Corey. Uh, and now Mac Black just, you know, this is something we're going to have to get used to, which was why it was so such a good signing to get Corey Crawford because we knew things like this were going to pop up. And being mm-hmm. able to rely on him in this situation, you know, it, it feels a little better than having to dip down, you know, into more like AHL and not knocking Scott Wedgwood. He played well, and the defense kind of hung him out to dry a couple times there. Yeah. Um, 
but that's 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 also part of this that it was a good test this was a a good loss in the sense that like you know the islanders are a real team that's yeah. they're functioning at a high level right now you know the bruins mm-hmm. when we played them first games of the season they were missing a couple players i know we are too uh it really showed tonight we could have really used nico uh and just for brats tonight have, yep oh absolutely um, and mac but <laughs> and Mac Black, yeah. Um, but, you know, playing the Bruins those first two games, okay. You know, they were missing a couple of their stars. Playing the Rangers, you know, I feel like the Rangers are more on our level. They're still, like, up-and-coming type of team, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, playing the Islanders, that's that that's a real deal right there. And, you know, that first period, we got, we got slapped in the face pretty hard there. You know, the the, uh, the yeah. other three games we were we were kind of, you know, the, the, boss, the first Boston game, they came out strong, but we really turned the momentum in that first period. And it seemed we like... Did. We had we had bad second periods, which was the opposite tonight. Like we really got smacked in the first, and I thought we came out pretty strong in the second. You know, the Islanders withstood our counterpunch, obviously, um, but mm-hmm. I thought the Devils made made a good push in in the second period. Um, but you, you touched on it: the, the killers, the penalties. This is this is a bad trend we're seeing. The too many penalties each, and this is unacceptable. Too too many on, men on the ice, two games in a row. Come on. Yeah, that's just Come a on. stupid that's, penalty. That's bad. That's bad. That's, you know, that's, that's bad. That, th- th- those are not penalties you should be taking, you know, if you're going to take them at the NHL level, maybe once at a time because of, uh, of a, a bad change here or there, but two games in a row to take that same penalty, that's, that's, you know, there's something going on. Someone's, someone's missing, someone's missing, um, you know, uh, a call from the coach or someone's jumping early or someone is staying on after, you know, they've been called off. Like it's just, something's not working and they got to figure that out. And they like said, that's not yeah. just on the players, it's on the coaches as well, you know, running that bench. So there's, there's, there's something not going right there that they've got to get rid of that penalty. But, you know, at least the, the third the period, it just, lining, it just, yeah, it just put us, that, that was the stake in the, in the coffin was that early third period. Oh there, yeah, the totally. First, yeah, the too many men, and then Travis. Uh, what did say, Jack? He took a hold uh, hooking penalty as well. They were like back mm-hmm. to back, and uh, yeah, you know that first one was a own. perfect carom. Yeah, that was a perfect carom on the it first was. one. You know, that's that's one where you're just like, damn it, you know, like what are you gonna do? But mm-hmm. still, yeah, and try and, not to be in that Wedgwood situation in the third period. And Wedgwood at least recognized that that bounce was there, and he went right to left, glove outstretched. You know, did did all he could on that, and it's just. You know, when a guy like that is 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 wide open, what was it? Uh, Everly with the second one there. Uh, mm-hmm. That was the second of the night there, and the third. You know, when when you have a good shooter like Everly, they're rarely going to miss the net. Like you know, in in a league I play in, you know, the guy you know five half the time will miss the net on that on that opportunity, and <laughs> and, and I would come out looking lo- looking all the better. But you know. Uh, Players at the NHL level, they're going to take those opportunities, you know, especially that there was no one around him. There was no one covering him. Uh, I think yeah. that, that bounce caught everyone off guard, uh, and it went in. I mean, that fourth goal, that tip, I mean, you can see the initial shot was going to Wedgwood's glove side, and he was making that motion to that glove side to make that save. And as soon as that mm-hmm. tip happened, one of the hardest things to do is to – stop your momentum and then go back to the other way. And he Wedgwood tried, but uh, you know, it's, you can only do so much on, on a tip like that, like that close. So it's, mm-hmm. you know, and not, speaking of, we gotta, we're not, not making, excuses, we gotta give a little hat. Still. Yeah. we got to give a little hat tip right there to Brock Nelson as well. That was, that was an amazing tip. Yeah. And uh, coming back after he got that nasty gash, uh, losing, lost, looks like he lost an edge and he, like face planted into PK's shin and knee area there. Yeah. Uh, it just in the like second, helmet, he was. Sometimes the helmet, sometimes he was, helmet he, he was come pretty bad just, though. Sucks. It was, yeah, and he was bleeding pretty good too. His. Yeah, you, know, his, you can see his, it. It was his, gushing. His his visor was covered in blood. It was kind of like a. It was, yeah. it, it was it was definitely it was definitely a one of the, a, a bleeder. But hey, you know what? He came back. He's a hockey player. He came back and look, he he scored a goal. You know, he helped He's his team with the player. win. That's right. You, you know, know, there were a couple of positives. There were a couple positives from tonight. Um, and uh, one of them we'll definitely have to touch on is, is the fourth line. Uh, but another one yeah. that I really think um, 
might get a little overlooked just just because we lost and what you know we got dominated there. Uh, but Ty Smith again looked really good. You know he had an yeah, assist on the on the Bastion goal again. You know you hear Dano and Bryce Salvador talk about it a lot. His shots find a way to mm-hmm. the net. You know, like they, they see their way through that traffic somehow. He's got some quick little moves, some little stutter steps, and he lets that puck go. And it just has a knack so far, so far. You know, this is also the scouting report on him, you know, but so far in these four games, <laughs> his shot seems to find those alleyways, you know, from the point yeah. to get through, which, you know, it, it did in the second period. You saw them starting to turn it on a little bit more. You know, the Islanders were also doubling Jack. Which you know they did they they almost caught they almost caught him with Ty as well Jack almost set up Ty for that uh, shot in the second I believe uh, yeah. when the Islanders were uh, doubling Jack out there but um, I thought Ty Smith played played a strong game um, even yeah. in this like you know how the Islanders played so strong I thought he uh, of our defensive pairings he he was noticeable in, in a good light yeah and it it seems like he is at least trending in the direction that we were all hoping that he would and, and being that defenseman mm-hmm. that, that everyone had hopes for, you know, and a good defenseman will be smart with their shot and, and try to find those holes and, and make sure that they're tippable because those, you know, from the goalie standpoint, you know, things that are tippable can be, I mean, look at that, that fourth goal tonight. Like they, they could be the biggest pain in the ass to try to stop. Uh, mm-hmm. And and when those goals and and when those shots are at that you know that that perfect height and and they they find those little holes, you know you've you know the opportunity for a screen, the opportunity for a redirection, whether indirect or not, it, you know it's that's that's smart play by the def- you know by him as a defenseman, and th- those increase your scoring opportunities big time as well. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, Omar just said it, you know, uh, on our Facebook page. Um, and I said it before too. I think this is a good, I think this is a good one for them to look at on tape. You know, I was really, really hoping they got a goal there at the end of the third. I was hoping they would just get at least just put one in the net. Yeah. You know, just to get a little more positive, uh, ending note, but they didn't, that's okay. And, and like you said, they, is it Saturday or is it Sunday? I can't remember whatever. When, when do they play Saturday. Saturday? Is it Saturday? It is Saturday or, I mean, I believe. Yeah. I love that they're coming back. I love these series. Like, all right, now you guys seen it. Right like, give us, let, let's take another shot at the aisles. You know, like I like this test. Yeah. You know, I like this. I like this challenge. No, sorry, it is Sunday. Um, it is Sunday. Sorry, it is Sunday. It's Sunday. I can't. Okay. I I, I don't even know what day today is. So, uh, you know, ex- excuse. Oh, that's for, right. Please excuse me for 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 not knowing the day. Um. The, yeah, the Sunday, Sunday podcast will turn into our uh, our post game podcast. So the will, uh, the regular will, Sunday, yeah. the regular regular Sunday. If you're expecting nine o'clock, we're gonna wait for the uh, we're gonna wait for the game to end. So we're not uh, so we can all watch and then we can all hopefully celebrate the next Devils victory. Mm-hmm. Uh, if not, well, yeah, we'll use it as a learning experience. Yes, we are not we are not stupid stupid enough to compete head to head with our beloved devils. We'll we'll compete head to head with with other things, but but not our beloved Sorry, devils. Guys. We will not compete head to head. <laughs> Sorry guys, I um I was watching softball before. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Here you are. Thanks, Sam. Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Oh, uh, but yeah, no, I think I think this is a good game for them. Uh, <laughs> I I think this was a good game for them in that sense where they they can learn a lot, especially from the Islanders. The the Islanders are a polished yeah. team. Uh, they got oh, you yeah, know, totally. Hell's Bells. They they went right all the way to the conference finals with Tampa Bay, right? Tampa Bay. They the uh, Isles got by Philly, and um, who else did they beat? In the playoffs last yeah, year, I can't remember. remember. But they, but they went. No, no, no. Tampa beat Boston. Uh, that was the second round. I can't remember. But it, the Isles, I think. Oh, I they think they, well played, they beat year. Philly. They beat Philly in the second round. I think. Uh, I can't remember who they played in the first round. But it they doesn't were matter. They, in the cup in the predictions game. Oh, uh, were they? I had yeah. I had Boston. Or no, no, I had no, no, no I had Tampa Bay. Um and um Vegas, but I had Vegas win in. So with Dallas, you know, 
they screwed me over. But anyway, um, <laughs> uh, um, the Isles are the Isles are a really good team, and I think they actually they are almost. Team. I think they actually going to be a little better this year as well because, you know. Mm-hmm. Having some of those guys that they brought in at the end, like the veterans like Andy Green and stuff like that. Uh, and Barzell, you know, just he's going to get, keep getting better, stepping up his game. You know, the way that yeah. we're hoping we're going to, you know, we're already seeing, you know, Jack and when Nico, oh man, when Nico comes back. This this was the first game that we really missed. I think we really missed like, you know, having yeah. that one-two punch. Because the fourth line played well. Actually, Nathan, I see uh, Nathan Bastion on the uh, post game right now. But the fourth line played really well. Really well, you could see them getting opportunities. Obviously, the Islanders were trying to shut down Jack Hughes. You saw, like, once he got the puck, basically like two defenders, like just whoop, like narrowed right in on him. Mm-hmm. So they were they were obviously focusing in on him, which you know makes sense. Um, which would be great if we had Nico, you know, as well that we can throw out there on that dangerous role. Um, but uh, the fourth line played well. You know, they were getting opportunities. You can see them actually, you know, controlling some of the play in, in the Isle zone. And, uh, you know, Bastion had his goal. But they were they also had a bunch of other opportunities. They, they were creating some offense. Yeah, and, you know, it, as much as we miss Nico and, and, and Brat, you know, we they've got to find a way to win without them right now uh, because we are potentially looking at one, two, three, four, five, six – Six anywhere from six to twelve games without those two, you know, depending on when 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 Brat is able to be with the team, and you know, and he's just corny. What's conservative? He's just he, what's, he's here. So what's he's gonna what's have the to actual quarantine. update? Let's tell everybody. Let's uh, what, what is the actual stat? He is he is in New Jersey and he's now quarantining. I'm curious if he has to quarantine. Uh, how many days it's for? I don't think anyone said yet. Okay. But even okay, so let's say he got to New Jersey today. Let's see, he's got a quarantine for fourteen days. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. So Joey Jardina, we're gonna talk about that too. Yeah. It, it, so his quarantine, if it starts today and it's fourteen days, would be over February third, and then we play February Pittsburgh 3rd. the next day on the fourth. We play the Rangers and, and now on don't Saturday. Forget. This is just He's throwing him back in the lineup. Yeah, this well, is just I, throwing I, him back in the lineup. Get, we we can't just do that. Uh, right now, this is now 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 this is assuming it's fourteen days from today. You know, when we first heard he was in New Jersey, which would be the Pittsburgh series in the beginning of February. Um, you know, p- potentially that second full week of February would would be. You know, maybe he'd he'd be in for the Ranger game on the what is that? I can't. What is that date? That would be the so the Ranger game on the sixth, you know, and then potentially, probably realistically, the the, the Pittsburgh game at home on the ninth, you know, and then mm-hmm. there's no real update on Nico, so they have to the team's got to find a way to win out these guys right now because we just did, we had no choice but to play without them, uh, and yeah, we could have used them tonight, that's for sure, but you know, uh, another, and then another hopefully, problem. Hopefully Hopefully Wedgwood stay on the COVID on the COVID list is 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 short. So that's all I wanted to finish with. But Black, what do you yeah, got? Blackwood. Um uh, you know, our man Joey uh GR Dina, I think, something like that. Uh just pointed out something that I noticed as well. You know, Gusev, I have it here in my notes. Gusev is just not there yet. You know, there's there's no. something's something's not right, something's not clicking. Um he mm-hmm. doesn't I don't know. He seems shaky with the puck, uh, whereas yeah. late last year we saw him like controlling games, much like uh, Jack was doing in the first, you know, three games. Um, I I get it. Like tonight is a different night because the Isles kind of like shut down everybody, but you still heard like Jack Hughes's name, you know, come up. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I really feel like Gusev. You know, you didn't you didn't hear too much. About him, you know, Zaka had they they had that one good look. I feel like, and and that was about it, really. Um, I'm I'm wondering if like I wrote this down too. Flip Sharon Govich and uh, Janssen, you know, put put Sharon Govich with Gusev and Zaka for uh, I don't know, just that European Russian kind of feel, and then move Janssen up with. uh, Jack and Kyle. I don't know. I it just it just seems like they're they're a little stuck right now for some reason. 
Uh, it, it, it wouldn't surprise me if they switched up lines a little bit. You know, he, 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 here we are saying, hey, maybe we should switch the lines a little bit when we came from when they, you know, over switching the lines. Um, <laughs> you know, or was, just one guy, just stuff. one guy. We're talking <laughs> one flip here, not everything. We're not Heinz it up. Of, Speaking of Gusev, though, there there was a play in one of the Boston games. It may have been the the op, uh, it, I can't remember if it was opening night or Saturday, where mm-hmm. he was down. Uh, on the lower to the to the goalie's right, and it was almost like a wide open one timer. All he had to do was connect, and it was going in the net, and he was completely missed. And that mm-hmm. that is standing out to me as a moment that had he connected, that may have changed the trajectory of what he's doing right now. But when I saw him mm-hmm. miss that, I was like, damn, that was a, that's a big miss for a NHL caliber player like him. Cause that would have been a sure goal because uh, I, again, I can't remember if it was Thursday or Saturday, but it, you know, whoever, whoever was in net for whatever game it was, was not going to make it there in time. Like it was just a wide open net. If he would have connected and got something on it, it was going in. Uh, but that just stands out to me with him and it's kind of stuck with me since like, man, that, that miss and then his, his lack of, um, impact since then has been noticeable Mm -hmm. by not being noticeable, uh, you know, and, and him not being there. So I I don't know. Uh, Joey says maybe palms is waiting for Nico. I I don't know. I, I doubt that because, Palms is going to want to play hard no matter what. I'm sure he'd prefer to play with Nico if if, if that's who he knows he plays better with. But um, uh, I don't know. Richard Slenko also points out too many passes. I, I now as soon as you wrote that, Richard, I I re- recalled a moment where Dano even said that like Gusev yeah should have shot the puck and he tried to pass it. You know, like it's just. He's not he's not right now. Like the confidence just isn't there for some reason. You know, I don't know exactly what it is. Uh, and again, it's only four games in, but we remember uh, this is only a 56 game season. So these games mm-hmm. are things that if these these are issues that need to be figured out a little bit faster. Where before you could say, oh, give him another five games, wait till like the 10 game point, you know, um, and it'll be fine. We'll have plenty of time yeah. to turn it around. You know, we, we lost that, um, you know, those 20 some games. What is it? 24 34 my math is 24 whatever it is 26 yeah, don't ask uh, do 28 that. games <laughs> yeah i'm bad at math um but we lost those that time for the the teams to find their identity and it, it's tough because they didn't have a proper training camp you know yep. um so, but goose you know is someone who's not he's not just a rookie you know he was he came in as a veteran from the khl you know so mm-hmm. yeah i don't know is it that, is, that is, he's the biggest unnoticeable one for me right now. So is, is he maybe one of those players that you move out of the lineup when, we when get... Nico and Brad come back? Yeah. I don't, that's a tough one. That's a and, tough one. And not for, and not, not so much for, for anything, but like, Hey, you know, we're going to, we're going to sit you. Maybe that'll give you a little bit extra motivation, you know, you know, you, you, you want to give guys a chance, but, you know, like you're saying, like you, you can't give these guys their normal chances because, you know, every every lost game, every lost opportunity, every lost point is is potentially your playoff live. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. It, it, that's your playoff opportunity. Like a, a missed point here could be the difference come May, which is weird to say mm. that, that, that May is the – you know, that, that break point, but you know, we could potentially lose out of the playoffs by two points and, and we can look back to maybe tonight and say, Oh damn, you know, imagine if Blackwood was in that game. You know, it's like, I, I, I hate to sound dire, but, but that's the type of season this is going to be. Uh, that's why we're hoping that that Blackwood's not on that, that, that COVID list for that long. You know, that's why, you know, Dell, I think is going to help big time. Um, yeah, I, I, oh, we're gonna I saw, have to, yeah, we're going to have yeah, to, I mean, in, I saw a little Steve well. on the game thread, little Steve from hockey on tap said that, you know, made mention that that Dell signing is, is, is looking pretty good right now. It, it is, except he's in quarantine cause he came from Toronto. Um, yeah. So, well, you know, we'll see it's, it's having, 
you know, I think Wedgwood's good as a backup. Uh, you know, he's not going to be backup. a starter. Backup. Yeah. But I think he's, you know, we can't live with that. Every, I don't think we can live with that every Every, every time the puck was shot, like, I'm not going to lie. My heart kind of like was like, <gasps> you know, like every you know, shot the elders took. But I do know that he, so, well. he played I'm well. He played well. And I'm, I'm curious if he would have. I'm curious how much different his performance would have been if he would have gone into t- to today knowing he was going to be the nope. starter because, yeah, because I, I, I said That's this, fair too. Yeah. I said I said this pregame that you know when we found out that Blackwood was out and, and Sam and I went live, I said this that your role as the backup is is to be ready at all times and to be ready to be thrown in. But when you know you're starting that night, or you know you're going to get the start tomorrow, like you. you even as as the backup, even though you do prepare yourself to to go in at any time, when you know you're going into the game and you have full knowledge that that is happening, um, mm-hmm. you do prepare yourself a little bit differently than when you're thrown into that situation. I mean, we can look at at what happened when Sorokin went in for Varlamov, you know, during warmups. It's Sorokin didn't look very good at all. Uh, there's a lot of mental yeah, preparation that 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 goes into playing goal too. So I really am curious to see what, uh, depending on the length of Blackwood's stay on the COVID list, you know what what Wedgwood would look like with full knowledge he's the starter, you know which again I mean that, we get the Islanders again that, on Sunday. That's a good point because I mean the first two goals in the first period were I thought were bad. Mm-hmm. But the two in the third on the power play were not. I can't really. The one he got. I mean, Barzell came down and I mean, I don't know. He just looked like oof. Yeah, he when Barzell a shot that shot. I, was, I, I know, but I was just like, oh god. Like he Wedgwood didn't even look like he moved. You know, I was just like, oh no, this is this yeah. is not going to be a fun night. You know. Uh, but the the whole team, like like I said, the, you know, when we talked about the Islanders came out swinging in that first period. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Yep. Um, but the, the second played much better. Uh, and that could be what you're talking mm-hmm. about. Maybe he got like more into that game mindset, you know, oh, yeah, now totally. it's like, all right, sh- sh- shook off that little, that, that rust there. Um, and in the third period, like we talked about those two goals were, they were really good plays. You know, the, the lucky term yeah. that came, uh, came right back to them, you know, off the boards. And we saw that Wedgwood was trying to get across. It's just, man, I mean, that was just, it was perfect. And then uh, oh. the uh, the tip by Brock Nelson that like completely yeah. changed direction. You know, like those two goals, you really cannot like put on Wedgwood. You know, no. And then and then we have to look at team defense too, which in the first period, shots on goal were fifteen to five. You know, we allowed fifteen <laughs> shots, fifteen another fifteen shots in the first period. You know, we 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 let That's up sixteen bad. against. Bad. Yeah, you know, we let up sixteen against Boston in the first period. So, you know, when you, you know, when you're, when you're allowing that many shots on goal, like it's, it's the other team is getting so many more opportunities. Like, you know, you can only as, as, as the goalie, you can only do so much. Uh, Yeah. 15, sorry, 15 to six. We outshot them in the second and the third 12, you know, 13 to nine and 12 to 11. But again, that's they got good. Their, that's good. I yeah, like that. Good. Those, I'll take that. Those I'll are take good that. Numbers. Yeah, yeah. But we also, you know, Varlamov is a very good goalie, and he's playing oh, very yeah. well. So we that's we Islanders also take that into account too. Islanders they got, yeah. they're, they're just they're, they're very they're they got good veterans. They got a couple like mm-hmm. you know really good rookie or younger players. Uh, but they're yep. they're built to make a make a run like this year, next year sort of thing. Hi, Sam. Hey, Sam. Um, I just got that uh, Chris Ryan text message. The Devils found out that Mackenzie Blackwood's status this morning. They went through contact tracing to identify any close uh, contacts. Uh, there were a few, uh, including goalie coach Dave Rogalski, uh, mm-hmm. but all of their tests came back negative, so they were clear for tonight. Uh, it's a situ- It's going to be a situation worth monitoring the next couple of days. But Ruff hopes that the precautions and protocols will just limit the team's absences to just Blackwood. That coming from so, Chris Ryan of NJ.com. So they're saying he okay. is 
um, positive. He is a he, he is COVID positive, right? His test came back. Does it say anywhere that his test actually came does back it, positive? Does not say that. I think it's because of league protocol. I don't. Okay. Do they? I, I don't. Th- I think they keep that hush hush. Uh, Do they really? Because I, I hear they're I, they're telling quite big stories about Alex Ovechkin and the Caps down there, making a pretty big <laughs> example out of them. So I, I don't. I'm I don't guessing, think that's. I, I'm guessing. I don't think that's. But, you know. Okay. All right. Maybe, I just want to. I'm just wondering because I don't want to speculate you, because it could be any. It could be anything at this point. Well, some players mm-hmm. have gone mm-hmm. on there just because of like the contract tracing thing, you know. Like, but yeah. I guess you know because I I've heard of people definitely in football. You know, well, you're you're watching fantasy season because like some of these guys were having like two <laughs> false positive tests, and you're like, wow, who's going in on the Thursday night game? You know, like it was pretty nutty. So. You could at Monday be like, you know, damn it, this guy's, you know, he, he he's on the COVID list, and then on Wednesday, you know, oh, I had I had you know another false one, now I'm back, you know, like it's. So mm-hmm. I was just curious if he was actually sick, or if it's you know just that that sort of in, instance where it's like, oh, we got yeah. I don't have any symptoms, but I had I got a positive test, I'm gonna take another one, you know, and see if it goes back negative yeah. type of deal. Yeah, I'm just reading. If anyone knows, if yeah, know, if anyone knows, see Omar is posting some stuff. Ramona, I'm I'm proud of the fourth line too. We're all proud of the fourth line. <laughs> yeah, the fourth boys. line is doing well. They are. You know, and Beer Baron loves the fact that Mike McLeod is here. He doesn't have to go. You know, pay to watch Binghamton play anymore. He can actually watch him <laughs> play with the big team. But that yeah. drop pass, that drop pass, <laughs> yeah. I know that, uh, that, was, that drop that really killed us. Yeah, I mean, no, whatever. Mike Hiller, but, what do you think will happen with Will Butcher? Did you? I, I, all I will say is, uh, see what happened with Mackenzie Blackwood tonight, and that's what's going to happen with Will Butcher because there's going to be another defenseman that's going to get on this, you know, list at some point, and uh, Will Butcher yeah. will be in the lineup. You know, I could potentially see maybe Will Butcher on Sunday, you know, because the you know. Just to switch up the D a little bit, you know, today wasn't <clears throat> our best effort. You know, maybe maybe you, Sunday's you break opportunity. Out? Hmm. I don't think you're going to bring out Tennyson because the Islanders are, you know, they got a little little rough and tumble there at the end of the game. I, I don't yeah, think you're going to. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. I think you know, that's I, how Will Butcher is going to get in into the lineup. Is you know someone and uh, you know unfortunately. Well, that or unfortunately it happens someone gets injured i mean it's it's a physical game you know like it happens every year yeah. someone gets hurt and someone's got to step in so you know whenever that does yeah. happen <clears throat> i think and then as we talked about on on the sunday show or the last post game that's will butcher's opportunity to play well enough where the coaches feel they can't take him out of the lineup you know like yeah. go out there and perform to that point where the coach says well we can't pull Will out now, you know, like look at what he's doing. You know, yep. that's yep. his opportunity. So that that's my yeah. that's my uh stance, Mike. And and this season in, in particular, um you want depth, you know, out, oh, yeah. outside of the lineup. You want depth because the you know, you're talking about look injury, at what just happened to us. Compl- well, yeah, look at what just happened we, to us. I mean, there there are there are teams that are far worse depth. than us right now. Um yeah. But, you know, you're looking with a compressed schedule. Like you said, injuries are are probably going to start cropping up at some point with this compressed schedule and, you know, maybe mm-hmm. not enough proper time in between for recovery. It, you know, you want these guys waiting in the wings. You you know, you, you want to be able to draw on them because, let's face it, we haven't had that in the last couple of years. So, you know, what a, you know, Will, Will Butcher, I, I highly doubt seeing them trading him or doing anything like that. You know, unless no, a deal comes along, I but I highly see them doubt because you need that depth this year more than ever. Um, you know, maybe, maybe at some point they send him down to Binghamton just to get some, um, just just some game experience. If they're not going to put him in the big lineup, but you mean you mean the practice rink at the old uh, Prudential yeah, Center there? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which they start soon. I saw. Uh, they they're they're starting soon, so you know I I I hope that there's a way to watch those games because I think that'll be fun. Oh, that'd uh, be you awesome! Know, just to yeah. see what we got. 
I would I would love to do that. Uh, even if they, yeah. hey Devils, if you're listening now, broadcast that on the uh, and then the NHL app or something. Yeah, they, they no, already. Bro- I mean, they were broadcasting the practices from there anyway, weren't they? Right. Yeah. Hey, uh, actually, actually, because we know they listen. Hey, uh, Devils, I know a um, I know a streaming <laughs> network that could potentially stream those games for you. Uh, it's called the Primetime Radio Network. So you might want to reach out to them. Uh, I, I guarantee, I guarantee you that the Primetime Radio ne- Network would would be able to perfectly stream those Binghamton Devil games. So just you know want to say that. Yeah, I mean, they're hot right now. Just as hot as this picture. <laughs> <laughs> he was Bernie was cold in the parking lot. I was trying to help him yeah. warm up a little bit. <laughs> Bernie's, that was a cold night. Bernie's, I do remember that. Bernie's knee bug. Cold, <laughs> that night was a cold night. This night? Uh, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, feel the burn. Feel the burn. <laughs> <laughs> Feel the burn. Oh, Lordy. I thought I was trying to be punny there, but anyway. Oh, <laughs> terrible. Uh, terrible. Well, big game on Sunday. Uh, we, should, yeah, uh, game. Let, we should let our uh, viewers know that uh, we our scheduled time will be right after the game. We'll start our Sunday podcast. Our, normally, mm-hmm. we would start at 9 p.m. Eastern. But we will start right after the Devils Islanders games this time around. I will be watching the Devils feed. I couldn't. I, I guess the package I have, I don't get the the MSG plus two yeah. or whatever the heck it's called. So I watch. I, I got to tell you my experience before we, before we go. I, I, I watch the Islanders feed. Uh, Shannon Hogan is very tall. Mm-hmm. Because Butch Gore. I look. Uh, my wife looked him up. He's five ten, and Shannon Hogan's like that tall. Um, not a knock on them. I mean, they're professional broadcasters, but I almost fell asleep just listening to them talk. It was pretty bland yeah. and vanilla. I think that's loose style, but that was pretty bland and vanilla. No, oh they, they, they've had the same play by play for a while. I will say yeah. this: it was. Um, it was it, it, it was it was tough times over here in Casa de Shorts guy having to rough it with non HD uh, Devils hockey tonight. It was uh, mm-hmm. man, it felt like I was slumming it, you know, with the old you know rabbit ears on the top of the TV trying you to get what? Sports Channel to come in properly, you know, with that non HD feed. Well, you don't, know, you, know, you know what I should. I, I would say I'd say buy by the cable, get yourself some sling and the NHL app, and that'll solve all your problems because. <laughs> All the Devils games are in HD for me. <laughs> Couldn't you um, download the MSG app and then just stream it on your phone? Yeah, I think but I could have guessed. Why would I? Yeah, why would? Why if no, I have you, like a inch TV? Like, you know, why I have, am I going to stream it on my phone? Like, I that's yeah. I hate, no, you, I, can, that, like, you can stream it on your phone and put it on the big screen if you don't have MSG two plus like that. That's only certain apps. But I like do, do that. But I do. But I do have the channel. It's just you know I'm just sarcastically saying I had to rough it with non HD, which is is fine. Mm-hmm. I can do. You know I remember growing up in the sports channel days. You know I I can mm-hmm. I can live with non HD television. I'm just you know trying to trying to make a joke here, I, and I'm not going to stream <laughs> it on my phone. Forget that. You know. You know. Yeah, I was, and then I don't oh, want to. Yeah. No, I'm not I tying up my computer the- either. I wanted to see the difference between Erica Wachter and Shannon Hogan, you know, two. Yeah, because remember, <laughs> Deb, Placey, Deb Placey used to do Islanders. Then she did Devils. She did. Back in the day. So yep. I was just yep. trying to you know, compare, you know, Bryce Salvador to Butch Goring. You know, the intermission reports. Bryce, Bryce mm-hmm. has a his, – his hockey <laughs> mind just, it just makes the game even better. Because you just see it from you know, a perspective of a former player, and uh, it's almost like he's reading the plays. Um, and and actually, truthfully, right now, all of they they were all probably just like in a studio, a door away from each other the, the entire night tonight. Since they're all broadcasting from uh, from the MSG studios in New York, they're probably just on the other side of a door from each other. That's about as far as they were. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I've been watching Erica Wachter's uh, Instagram posts, mm -hmm. like uh, you know all the behind the scenes stuff, like their new studio and all that. We we should do that with our with our stuff. We should do like behind the do scenes. Behind the scenes, it it can be done. Yeah, yeah, we'll start doing that. Be done. I mean, we should even build our virtual studio. I wish we had a virtual studio like the Devils have. I mean. I'm sure Beer Baron can draw something just as good as what they have. Oh, this is what we have right now. Uh, Here, I'll, I'll, I'll zoom in. I'll zoom in. That's our studio. <laughs> <laughs> See that? Da -da -da, da -da -da. Lucky strike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could be our studio. Anyway, uh, enough of that. Uh, we'll be back Sunday night now. Um, just a, another programming note. Uh, the hockey writers, Dan Rice, who covers the Devils, but also covers the Riveters, he and I are going to be doing, for the next three weeks, a new podcast. It's a, it's a, it's a pilot series. It's called We Can Do It Podcast. Uh, we'll be covering the Riveters and doing post-game of the Riveters on the Primetime Radio Network. If you go to the Primetime Radio social media pages, you can see that, support women's hockey, and the NWHL. Um, I know Rebecca is going to be playing that podcast in the locker room, so it's kind of cool. Yeah. Something new, you know, all that. Um, and that's that. And you know so what? And you know what? Good luck to the Riveters, and, and good luck especially to uh, – Friend of the podcast, Moose, Rebecca Moose Morse, uh, in, in their yeah. quest for for another cup coming up. And again, it's you know, tune into those games when you can, and then when they get to the semis and the finals, they'll be on on NBC Sports, which is fantastic. So good luck to the awesome. Riveters and especially good luck to Moose. And uh bring it home, Moose. Any last thoughts, Scotty? Uh, well, let's see. My, uh, Boquist prediction did not come true. So <laughs> I'm going to make my next bold prediction, um, which will be, ah, uh, damn it. I got to come up with something good. All right. I'll say, I'll say two, uh, two assists for Gusev next game. That'll be my prediction. Okay. You sure see him come out and do something. Bold prediction, Wedgwood shuts out the Islanders. <laughs> you well, want bold? Last... There's bold. <laughs> my last prediction, okay. I felt like Lou was gonna, Lou's team was going to spoil the party, which they did. I forgot what score I predicted, but I, I think the Devils only scored one goal. I think that was the only thing I that was correct. I say 3-2 Devils. On Sunday, okay. Lot lessons uh, learned, uh, and a couple days rest. Hopefully, maybe Mac Mac will be back. Maybe it was a false positive. That's what we hope. But most of all, we hope he is uh, healthy and, and mm -hmm. better. Hopefully, it's nothing. You know, but we can only hope. All right. Well, thank you for watching us. We're going to drop the podcast. At midnight, so you can listen, not live live, but you can listen to the on-demand of us live live. Until mm -hmm. next time. Let's go double.